let's kick things off here, my friend. With Adrian Wojnarowski, who, listen, is amazing at his job for what he does. He breaks news like nobody else in the National Basketball Association. He is trusted by coaches and players and front office people and all of that. And he is great at that. However, and we have seen this, this, he's not the first guy to do it. He might just be the most high profile guy to do it in, in this manner is we see these guys kind of step outside of their lane and then they get in and start talking to sports gambling stuff and whatever. And you can tell when people, one, probably aren't gamblers themselves, two, aren't very familiar with the industry themselves. And Woj certainly uh, made that quite apparent this week. Yeah, so here's the the backstory, and this was this set everybody on fire in sports betting Twitter and, and around. So what happened was Woj was uh, talking about Kyrie Irving going back to Boston and getting you know getting accosted by fans. No shock there. Uh, and then somehow he makes this segue, this really fairly una- unnatural segue into gambling and the effect of that <laughs> on um, in in person betting. Now people have like said tried to say. He's not saying that this happens in Boston or Massachusetts, but that was right. an entry point into it. It's super weird, right? Like Kyrie's, we know why Kyrie's getting accosted. And they start saying, you know, gambling and in-game betting and all this, all this more action that's happening at live events uh, is going to make for a, for a, a toxic environment for people who are attending games. And I, I don't, I'm just not sitting here and I'm going to buy that. There are about a million things that are creating toxic environments at sporting events, including alcohol, uh, you yes. know, just the breakdown of, of, of society in terms of us being nice to each other. Uh, you know, gambling for me like, is like like number 10 on the list of things that can make a toxic environment in it. So it's and the, the thing that really bothered me about this is we're like we're still in this world where people are somehow pretending that sports betting didn't happen until real recently. Right. Like right. people have been, you know, you know, in New York and Boston, especially big cities, people have been getting down their local bookies forever. For the last couple of decades, you could bet offshore uh, at, sp- at sports book. This is not like, yes, there are way more people betting now, but there's not like there weren't a ton of people betting pre all of this legalization. So this idea that somehow there's this critical mass of people who are betting and it's going to make for, you know, it's going to create, you know, dangers for athletes. Like, man, I just don't buy any of this. And yeah, it's oh. like, it, this is Woj going like, you know, from the way I, you know, way I listen to the segment, you know, some, some GM or somebody saying to him, you know what? I think this is what's going to happen with gambling. We're getting into it too fast, which is arguably correct. But that like, this is not the reality on the ground. And like, no. yes, there could be this one off of some, some idiot who has a bet and like goes on the floor or something that could happen. That could, that, that danger's always been there. Um, but I just don't, I just don't buy. And I, I certainly curious on your opinion on this, that this is that gambling is all of a sudden going to like change the, in, the, the experience in any yeah. sporting arena or stadium in the, in the U S yeah, as you said, for first and foremost, and again, he didn't necessarily say, you know, in that arena or whatever and all that. But again, as you mentioned, legalized betting isn't even available in Massachusetts where this game <laughs> took place in the first place. So there, there is at least that kind of underlying in, in the whole thing. Secondly, as you mentioned, yes, the major thing that makes people act like pricks at games is booze. You and I, uh, listen, <laughs> me, me more than you. I drink and I gamble and I can assure you the thing that makes anybody around you act in a different manner more than gambling is alcohol and booze and because it just changes your changes your state of mind. So, yes, that three. He never even mentions fandom in this whole little rant of his, which, by the way, you know, if you're going to give one side, you need to give the other side as well. If you've ever been to a sporting event, the completely sober person who does not have a bet at all but is decked out in their jersey and their hat and they've got like, you know, their every single thing they have on is because they live and die and breathe that team and all that. That creates people acting crazy and out of their minds and stuff all the time as well because you just get sucked into that fandom and you go crazy and you go nuts and you do these different things. And listen, another thing that never gets brought up, and this is more of a macro statement in all this with this you know, fan stuff. And you know, everyone wants to blame gambling. You know what they never bring up, Dustin? No one ever brings up fantasy. And the thing is, is individual performances is what fantasy is all about. It is not the actual team performance. It is individual performances. And listen, you and I both know 
prop betting, while we while we assume that it will get bigger over time, we assume that it will you know become bigger part of handle and all that things for these books. It is a micro, it is a microscopic part of what's going on with these businesses right now. So the individual player performances of these guys and things like that, because he mentions, I had you to score more points in the second quarter than this guy, and you didn't do it and all this. And it's like, you know, that actually makes more sense in fantasy than it does <laughs> in sports gambling. And again, no one ever wants to say anything negative about fantasy sports because, oh, it's been around for a long time. And that's not a new trend, right? Like fantasy right. football, especially like people have been accosting players on Twitter uh, and like, you know, for like, years, like years and years, this, and not, not, yes. even before DFS, right? And like, and yes. just, just in general, people, and then, you know, DFS came along, and then, like, I think, again, just we're talking mostly social media here, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm sure it's just as much of a problem in, in, like, that's just as much of a problem in an arena or stadium, too, right? Like, where people are just yes. bitter about their fantasy teams, right? Like, again, this is like the whole thing is this, this is so contrived. It's this is not a new problem either no. from fantasy, from sports books, or whatever. It's like, Again, and, and again, I don't want to say that it's unique like to a specific sport, but we need to bring up as well. Basketball is the only sport of the major sports where you're right on top of the players, right? right? Like if you've ever been to a football game, you've had the guy next to you screaming at the quarterback of the other team. He just can't hear the guy because you're so far away from him. And in baseball, you can't hear the guy whenever you're screaming at the center fielder. The guy's way out in center field. You, know, you can't hear. But on bas at basketball, it's just a unique circumstance where you are right on top of the court. Like, you're right next to the players. They can, if there's, you know, kind of quiet in the arena, they can hear you and whatever. So, again, like you're saying, none of this stuff is new. It's just unique to, one, this very specific circumstance. Two, Kyrie Irving being a very polarizing figure as it is anyway in the, whole, in the, in the town of a team he used to play for. I mean, there's just all of these things that lead to this specific incident and then to paint it with this broad brush that – gambling somehow is going to make this all worse it's just it, it's, it's 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 a weak argument to begin with and honestly it's just a lazy argument yeah and that's that's the part about whoa just like we know he's not lazy right and he's he's yeah. just he's he's trotting out what is a very lazy argument about how gambling intersects now i'm again i'm not going to sit here and say we have more people gambling that does that that probably that just makes it more Absolutely. likely we're going we're gonna to get a gambling incident we're going to mm -hmm. and and all of the other things alcohol people being on top of fans like I'm not going to sit here and say it's not more likely that we get some idiot going on the floor because mm -hmm. he lost a prop bet. Uh, like that's that's certainly, but it's not creating this this whole <laughs> ethos of a more toxic environment for NBA games. That's just nonsense. It's just not yeah. true. Uh, anyway, it's yeah. I mean, uh, I was as uh, if we did the, the podcast today, that story came out. I would have been even more angry. My anger has simmered. But uh, you know, yeah, it's yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. Just do some, do a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it feels like Woj just like like rehashing something he heard from a GM or, or somebody. And he's like, and he really paints it broadly. He's like, yeah, I've heard this from a lot of players and, and people in the mm -hmm. NBA. And like, they're, where are they getting this from? Like, again, they, people have been yelling. If, people have been yelling at them for poor performance or related to betting and not for way a long before. Time. Yes, yes. Right. Way before sports betting was the thing. Yeah. Way so, before. Yeah. I, I'm just not, I'm not buying this again. So like there, there can be incidents that, that, that seem to prove the thesis, but even that doesn't prove the thesis. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot going on that, yeah, you want to, you want to make fan environments better, get rid of alcohol. That's your number one right. step, right? Which is, we all know is never going to happen because they make infinity money selling alcohol at NBA and any other sporting event because it's $15 a freaking uh, freaking beer, <laughs> right. right? So Right. It costs them 50 cents and they charge you 15 bucks. It's a pretty good business model. So right. yeah, man, I, I just, it, it's look, it, it's this deal where you and I and anybody else in this industry that is, is a little bit more plugged in that lives and breathes this stuff whenever we see someone more than more than anything for me is when Woj, when Woj says something it, it makes headlines like in and, and so he says something like that that again is in my opinion a little bit careless a little bit reckless to say painting that broad stroke you know broad brush stuff going on here but people pay attention to what he has to say he's an authority figure he's a dude that like people yeah. carries a bunch of clout and so when he says something like that, it makes headlines and people read that. And then we all know how this works, Dustin, you and I know people read headlines and that's just the truth. You know, like, yep. like so <laughs> they read a headline. Wojanowski says, says betting is making uh, fans act, you know, horrible towards players. And they're like, they go to this water cooler the next day and got, like, can you believe this? And blah, blah. it's yeah. like that. That's the biggest problem for me with all this is, is, you know, 
there is at least a tiny bit of responsibility, I do believe, on these guys that carry so much weight in the sporting industry to at least do a little bit more, you know, a little bit more research and, and get a little bit more of a foundation for these kind of opinions that they're going to throw. Yeah. Out. And again, there's pushback from the, like the, the betting media like us. Right. But that's, yeah. we, we have just so much of an audience. The rest of the, you know, the sports world, you know, picks up on this, you know, even SI, which is, you know, has a sport, sports illustrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the story that I first, first saw this run. They pick it up and it's like, Oh, this is the worst thing in the world. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, just absolutely right. Like they have, they have, a, I mean, SI has a sports book. They're, they're rolling out right. a sports book. They have sports betting content and they're just parroting this too. So, the level of yeah the level of nuance on this you know and and we're gonna we're sitting here ranting on nuance here for 15 minutes you know we have a fairly limited audience here like yep. like people who care about this stuff yes but like the wider audience is, yeah, is exactly gonna see Woj saying gambling's bad that's now the truth I guess probably yep. because yeah we have no nuance to anything that we have especially when it comes to gambling and, and all of this and you know uh all my, my final take on this is this is obviously Philadelphia fans fault uh, somehow that's all that's, that's <laughs> my, I, I I know that with the in the my heart that <laughs> it is our fault somehow one uh one last thing here Dustin I would like to say that I would like to thank Woj at least just a little bit because he did bring our part of of the industry and hashtag sports betting Twitter. It might be the first thing that everyone's been like lockstep on ever, like in right. in in something. It's like so if he did do anything, you and hashtag sports betting Twitter actually were on the same side for something. Yeah, we're all, we're all unified. Like yeah, there's I mean <laughs> there's probably some other someone out there with a contrarian take, but uh, yeah, we all pretty much agree <laughs> this is nonsense.